Hi, welcome back to CS 170. Uh, we're picking up on chapter 12, privacy and security. So, so here we are, uh, we're talking about uh, basic information uh, and different aspects of information uh, in the context of technology. Okay, um, so talking about uh, who owns that data, how do we control it, um, privacy, some of the technology uh, aspects uh, that criminals may use. Um, so we'll go into all of that. And of course, it's covered in your in your book in your reading. And as I suggested in the prior lectures, um, you know, do if there's any part of the book that is important to be mindful of, it's uh, this section of the course. <clears throat> the Excel stuff, you can get a lot of that stuff either through the lectures or through um, like Microsoft uh, and whatnot. But uh, for these topics, you you definitely want to pay attention to the readings in the book. Um, your exam questions will probably be driven off of that. Okay. So, uh, so when it comes to like historically what you look at in terms of privacy, uh, you're thinking in terms of uh, the Fourth Amendment, um, and you know, I think with the current technology state, um, it's become more of a problematic type of thing, right? In the past, you may not have the same access to information that you do now because of technology. Um, so this part right here, um, talking about, uh, you know in the past for your privacy to be violated, um, it's kind of, you know, difficult, right? Um, you pretty much were asked by people and you chose to give out certain bits of information or not. Now, of course, other people can turn around and take that information and do things with it uh, that you may not be aware of, um, namely, let's say the government or whatever, but, um, Certainly, that was not the same order of magnitude in terms of how many people has access to your private information right now uh, compared to uh, days past. Okay, so this point here about technology, privacy can be violated without people knowing it. I think many people know about that already. I've seen like different things in the, in the news about data breaches, <clears throat> data breaches like the credit reporting agencies or you know, places that you shop at, um, whatever, right? Like uh, there's all kinds of breaches of that information, let alone the fact that the companies themselves have a lot of information about you uh, and what can they do with that information, okay? So, you know, they, when they talk about privacy, they talk about the type of information um, that uh, we generate when we do something, right? Most of the time, maybe we're doing something like buying something, uh, but we could be doing other things too. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of talked about this in, in last lecture, the lecture before about filter bubbles, right? How much information people might get through various channels, but maybe a common one might be with the cookies, um, that uh, will be used uh, to facilitate uh, an interaction or engagement uh, with whatever you're doing on the internet, okay? So, um, you know, you think about, you know, to yourself, right? What type of information is being generated um, and who owns that information, okay? When you buy and sell something, right? Um, so just think about it, like when you... I know I keep on coming back to Amazon, but other places do the same thing. You go to Amazon right now, you know, they have this whole idea of like one click, right? One click to buy something. Well, the reason why they have the one click is because they have all your information to facilitate that transaction, right? You gave it to them at some point in the past, right? Um, and you might say, oh, that's great. It's very convenient for me, right? And, you know, a lot of times that's what the trade-off is. You give that information in exchange for convenience, right, or for uh, someone to put something out there in front of you that uh, is anticipating your needs, right, whatever it is, whether it's your news, whether it's you want to buy something, whatever, right, but there is a trade-off for that, which is, you know, that information, uh, can it be 
redistributed or used by other people? Can it be used for other purposes other than facilitating that transaction? Okay. So, uh, you know, again, talking about, um, you know, privacy uh, with in the context of, uh, I guess, from the US, uh, from the United States standpoint, okay? Privacy as a, as a basic human right, okay? And then, you know, the challenges from a technology standpoint, can the information be kept private uh, on the internet? Um, and that's a ongoing debate, right? Um, you know, certainly it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of effort um, to, to support that, uh, the controlling of the information, locking down that information, making sure it's only being used for things that you approve of. Um, you know, that's, a, that's probably like the billion dollar question these days, okay? Okay, all right, so this is a, important topic. So if you're taking notes right now, highlight this point, right to be forgotten. Okay. Um, so it's this idea of like, whatever information that is out there, um, that if it's pertaining to you, it specifically ide identifies you and you don't want that information to be out there. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of tied to Google. Um, that you have the right to ask to be forgotten, like to pull that information. You don't want to be out there, okay? Uh, so that's what this right to be forgotten means, okay? Uh, they actually talk about it uh, pretty extensively in the book too, I believe. So you wanna you know, make sure you read up on this a book. This, this is an important topic uh, in, this, in this chapter, okay? Okay. So, uh, so this basically just talks about um, the, the fact that uh, it's not just something that people put out there and say, oh yeah, you have the right to be forgotten and then people walk away. Um, there's actually been a significant number of people that have participated on it, right? Um, and I guess maybe you think it, would, it might work uh, as, as opposed to, let's say, the, as opposed to like the do not call list. Right, um, so you can uh, actually exercise this right, uh, and you know you can see that according to this, uh, over a couple million uh, URLs uh, have been removed because of these requests. Um, so it seems to be out there, and it seems to be actively uh, used. Um, so something uh, to be noted. Okay, now it comes back around to the U.S. Um, can, can this happen in the U.S. in terms of the uh, right to be forgotten? Um, and, you know, I guess it's a, it's a debate. Uh, you can debate either sides on this uh, in terms of whether it violates uh, the First Amendment or not. Uh, so, um, you know, the... Is it, is it censorship um, or um, is it just um, changing the, the search results? Uh, what will pop up in your search results? Uh, so that's, uh, that's an ongoing uh, type of discussion right now, okay? Uh, so this gives another example. Um, so, I guess it's kind of similar talking about uh, this eraser law in California. Um, so it basically deals with minors, okay? Um, so you don't want certain things that say, historically before all this came along, you say, well, something happened as a minor uh, and then it's kind of wiped, right? So you don't, it doesn't travel with you for the rest of your life, um, but, with the way information is out there right now, um, you know, do you have a right to clean that up? Uh, so that it acts in the same, same fashion as, you know, before all of this, like being able to uh, wipe your juvenile records, okay? So there's another example. Um, so this is where, uh, 
let's say historically, you have a, you know, you've been arrested and you have an opportunity to not get convicted, right? Essentially uh, kind of uh, do things, uh, settle out of court, I guess you would call it. Uh, so your record should be quote unquote clean, right? Which in the past world that, that would be the case. Uh, but uh, these days, uh, that information is out there, right? And so this is an example of something that was out there. So it kind of it kind of just wipes out that idea of you're able to uh, <clears throat> not have something like this show up on your record, right? So you haven't been convicted of a crime, um, but because of this, uh, it's out there and people will uh, connect you to have been um, as part of a crime as if you have been convicted, right? So this is another challenging area in terms of your uh, privacy, your information being out there. All right, so security uh, is an important topic, um, you know, to, to help manage that privacy, that, that data uh, that you want to keep private, okay? Uh, so um, you have like, in this case, they give the example about the cell phone uh, communication. Uh, can someone listen to your calls? Um, and, you know, the goal should be no, right? Uh, same thing as like in the, in the old days, I guess, uh, for someone to be able to listen to your calls, you have to have like, um, you know, a court order and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> and then the, the security technology is supposed to keep things uh, to fulfill that, right? So maybe like uh, encrypting uh, your, your message as it goes across the, uh, essentially the internet. Um, so security technology uh, would, be, would be a facilitator in that regard. So these are the different categories. This is also uh, an important uh, area. So make, make note of this, highlight this uh, in your notes if you have a chance. <clears throat> So the possibilities of what happens to your information, okay? So in the one case, um, you say uh, no use, that means the information should be deleted when the business is finished with it. Uh, so uh, in a certain case, let's say we're talking about your credit card information. Uh, you wouldn't want if you were buying something from me, you wouldn't want me to write your credit card information. I just leave it on my desk uh, and anyone can come along, pick it up and use it uh, to charge stuff against your account, right? Um, so your full credit card information uh, should not be something that is uh, left laying around essentially, right? So you probably want to kind of clean that out as much as you can. Okay, and there's other, there's other bits of information, uh, let's say it's medical information um, that you may not want to be available out there, right? Um, so that will be like a no use, okay? Um, <clears throat> then you have the approval, right? Uh, or opt in, okay? Um, and then of course the flip side to that is uh, objection or opt out. Okay, um, that's kind of a bit tricky uh, because I mean, you probably all know like when you sign up for XYZ service, like the whole long disclosure thing, you're supposed to sign for multiple disclosures. I don't know how many people actually read those things. Uh, you're probably signing away your life, right? On those things. Uh, but, you know, that's another uh, type of thing where, you know, the, the business says, oh, here's our privacy code or our standard, uh, you know, you approve it or you don't. I think probably like 99 out of 100 people will just kind of sign it without even looking at it. Um, but anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, so approval, opt-in, objection, opt-out, right? It's basically like those privacy clauses 
um, that you sign when you go to the doctor's office or wherever. Uh, no limits, uh, which the their information can only be used any you know can be used any way the business wants to use it. I don't know how many times you know anyone will openly say something like that, but yeah, I guess that will be another another option there. Okay, uh, and then uh, internal use, so the business can use the user for future activities, right? So keeping your address or your credit card on file, okay? Um, you know, just to clarify a bit on the credit card on file, um, these days, I guess there's no such thing as a paper file. I hope there's not a paper file anymore. Um, but the way the, the computer system should be set up uh, to comply with best practice even uh, if the credit card, if you're if your business holding on to your credit card information, they sh you should not be able to look at the entire credit card. They may only show like the last four digits of your credit card info or something like that. Um, so all the way, you know, down the chain, there's no reason for anyone to access your full credit card info, right? Assuming that you've stored it in a secure system. Right, so you have a system that's compliant with the security um, so that when someone does want to use your credit card after you've been authenticated, um, then you can charge that credit card. So, um, you know, it, even though it says here for internal use and it says, yeah, I can keep your credit card information on file, that's actually a very sensitive topic. Um, and there's a lot of security to make sure that essentially no human person is supposed to look at your, your credit card information or be able to see your credit card information once it goes into the system to facilitate that transaction, okay? And most, you should only be seeing like the last four digits of the credit card number, okay? Like I said, it doesn't take away from a hacker from somehow hacking this secure system and pulling out your credit card information, right? But if everything works the way it's supposed to, no one should be able to see your credit card information, right? Uh, even if the business is supposedly keeping it to use it for a future transaction. Okay, so just a side note there. So privacy definition. Uh, so you uh, you control your information. That's the bottom line, right? So uh, you can choose uh, what uh, what other people do with that information that they collect it, you know, on you. Now, like I said before. Uh, in practice, it might be easier said than done, right? Like this point where it says, we tend to give away information, right? Either government business, socially or convenience. Like, like I said, before we're gonna use X, Y, Z thing, and we see like this like 10 page long uh, thing to kind of sign away all our privacy. 99% of people don't even read it. Right, they'll sign it, uh, even though they've pretty much given up all the rights to anything. Right, um, so um, I think this is the point that it's we're making here with the privacy here. Right, theoretically, you're supposed to control this; you have control over it. But in practice, most people just give it away. Right, uh, so not really a great situation there. Okay, uh, so. Uh, this is OECD, um, and it's just basically uh, an organization, uh, basically different countries or jurisdictions uh, talking about uh, privacy principles, right? Uh, again, uh, this idea, if someone's gonna collect information from you, you have to give them consent, okay? Or you should give them consent, right? So this limited collection idea. Um, and then if they're gonna have information on you <clears throat> that um, it should be accurate, complete and up to date, right? And probably the one that comes to mind for most people is your credit information, right? Uh, you may not realize it right now, but you know a lot of things uh, for you to transact financially is dependent on your credit rating, whether it's you getting approved to uh, rent uh, an apartment or try to get a mortgage to buy a house, 
or get a loan for anything really, uh, even uh, you know, for you to get a job, right? Your, your credit score uh, or your credit rating is out there. You're probably not gonna be very happy if those credit rating agencies are not uh, getting the most up-to-date information for you or the information is incorrect for one reason or another because uh, essentially your life is dependent on it, right? Uh, so that's kind of what they're talking about with this, right? You have a responsibility. If you're going to collect the data, make sure that data is right. So uh, purpose, uh, you know, I tell you I'm going to do this with the data. Well, then that's what you should be doing, right? Not something else, right? Um, so, uh, so you're not going to be, uh, doing something outside of what you said you're going to be doing. Okay. Uh, so if I disclose this, uh, it has to be within the terms of, I agreed with you, right? When I asked you for your information, if I told you, yeah, I'm only going to do it for this, uh, purpose, or if I disclose it, I might disclose it to X, Y, Z, uh, to make your life better or whatever it is, uh, that's all I do. I don't go decide to sell it to a third party that I never mentioned to you, okay? Uh, security, again, you know, like I said before, uh, let's say with the credit card information, you're not gonna like write down the credit card info and leave it on your desk, right? Uh, so take appropriate security precautions to protect your data, okay? Uh, so openness, um, so, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with XYZ uh, person who's trying to take your information, um, you know, you're, you don't feel like they're hiding something from you and, and stuff like that, okay? Uh, you know, as the person who's giving away their information, um, you know, you have a right to understand exactly what they're taking uh, from you, okay? Um, and accountability, right? So, um, you know, these are the main things or principles that they talk about in terms of privacy, which if you think about it, it sounds reasonable, right? Uh, these are things that will be important, uh, kind of a contract between whoever's taking your data and whoever's gonna give up their, their privacy or give up their data. Okay. Uh, and in case people are not really sure, OC OECD is more like um, like European uh, in nature, um, and you know that's why you see here there's kind of some differences between looking at um, Europe versus the United States. Okay, uh, so you know talk about some different things in, in terms of like where your data could be exposed, your privacy. Um, so you look at different things, right? Things that probably a lot of you know about, right? Your credit information, like I talked about before, your police records, your motor vehicle, your insurance, your claims histories, your insurance claims, uh, drug testing, uh, background screenings, um, you know, verify your credentials, uh, your DNA. Uh, so all kinds of places where there's information that uh, you need to make sure is secure. Okay. So here's like different uh, regulations or compliance uh, for different things. This is probably the one that is fairly common, which I, I kind of deal with a lot in terms of credit card information, uh, but there's others too. Uh, but PCI is important, right? Like a lot of businesses have to get um, PCI compliant to make sure they're managing um, your credit card information in a secure way. Uh, so we have tracking. Uh, so we have online tracking where the website um, is taking all of that detail about you. Um, and could be selling it to other people, okay? Could be to show ads, it could be to sell you other products. Um, so that's, I'm sure you're all familiar with that by now. Uh, and then you have the cell phone tracking, right? So of course, there's any number of potential people who can track where you've been throughout the day, 
sometimes it's good, right? You might have an app that you actually want to track, you know, your family members, right? Your mom, your dad, or your kids or whatever. Like, where are they right now? Um, so you can track where they've been. Uh, obviously, there's other things that can be related to where you are uh, selling you like restaurant. Uh, you know, say, hey, there's a great restaurant over here close to where you're at right now or something like that. Uh, from a privacy standpoint, that could also be abused as you can imagine, okay? <clears throat> cookies, we talked about cookies in the past. We know what cookies are, right? So cookies are things that are stored locally that help um, you feel like you're <clears throat> transacting uh, in a single engagement uh, or transaction with the, uh, with the website or the server. And, uh, but obviously it's storing information to facilitate that, okay? Um, <clears throat> again, it drives things like, uh, you know, advertisement and stuff like that. It could also have some other uh, information that can be abused or that information itself can be abused. Um, of course, a lot of you have probably heard about identity, identity theft, right? So someone steals your information, probably your credit card, but it could be other things too. Um, and, you know, use that to essentially like uh, impersonate you, okay? So these are a couple of cases, pretty famous cases that have been in the news. Um, so TJ Maxx, Target, uh, you probably know about the, like I mentioned before about the uh, credit agencies and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things here. So these are just kind of terms you should make yourself familiar with. Uh, malware, ransomware, virus, uh, worm, uh, there's exploit. Um, Trojan. Um, so just kind of understand these terms, uh, memorize them if you want, right? Uh, basically, these are all things to watch out for and to like the, the phishing um, threat that I talked about in one of my other videos. Uh, this is how some of these things get onto your computer, right? So you get some of these suspicious looking mails um, and say, click on this there's a chance that when you click on it, you're going to be introducing these things. Uh, and it's kind of a bad thing when that happens, okay? Uh, so going back to my original thing about phishing, don't do it, right? Don't, don't click on it when, when you see something. So, um, so these are the two categories of phishing, right? Whether it's like on a website, uh, someone sends you an SMS text or whatever, you click on it, a fake email, uh, you click on it, bad things will happen, okay? Um, this here uh, on the VPNs, um, probably the most notable thing for a lot of us is really public hotspots. Um, you know, it's quite easy for, for people to <clears throat> piggyback off of that traffic and get all kinds of information. Like the worst thing you can possibly do is like do like your banking transaction or something like that on a public hotspot, right? You're just asking for someone to like steal all your money, okay? Uh, so, um, you know, these are things you wanna kind of watch out for, okay? Uh, even like this point here where it talks about a VPN, in theory, VPNs do offer some sort of uh, protection, but not every VPN provider is a legit provider. Right, so you do have to be careful with that. Sometimes the VPNs can be a little bit shady um, and uh, you can be doing exactly what you weren't supposed, what you didn't want to happen uh, in terms of uh, losing your information. Uh, so I know this lecture, I've been kind of just banging through this whole chapter in, in one video. I figure I'll just do it all in one shot, okay? Um, so, we're almost at the end here. So we got the encryption uh, and um, obviously the opposite of encryption is decryption, okay? Um, so basically there's this idea of like, you have some information and then you apply some formula to it to encrypt it, right? And then the only way for you to decrypt it is essentially to be able to, um, apply another formula. It could be almost a reverse of the first formula or it could be some other way 
to come up with <clears throat> the regular uh, information that you uh, you started with. Okay. Uh, so that's what they're saying here. So here's the encryption. And then you have to have like a key uh, to apply to, to basically decrypt it. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, it's just kind of giving some terms to it. Okay. So let's say this is what you start off with here. Okay. The whole process is called encryption to get it to like something that's like gibberish, right? Uh, and then to bring it back to readable terms as decryption, right? Um, but start off here, get your readable message. And then this is like basically your scrambled message. Okay. And then this key is what you need to do to uh, decrypt it. Okay. And that's why you have this idea of this decoder ring. Okay. So there's two types of these keys. Right? I, I hope I explained this idea of these keys uh, uh, clear enough to you. You need the key to basically get you from the encrypted message to a message that you can understand, the original message, right? Um, so what I was saying before in terms of like, you know, basically the reverse of your, of your algorithm to, to encrypt it, uh, you use it to decrypt it. That's what this is. This is symmetric, right? So you're using the same key to encrypt it and decrypt it. So it's basically like going forwards and going backwards with the same thing, right? This one, asymmetric, uh, is using different keys. So you have uh, one key for encrypting it, and then you have another key for decrypting the message, okay? And then this is a very common uh, type of uh, encryption, uh, decryption scheme, right? Um, so they just call it private, private key, right? Um, so again, this is your starting point here. And then here's your public key to cause the encryption. Here's the uh, encrypted message. Uh, and then you have the private key uh, that's necessary to make it readable again. So it's not like you're gonna use the public key to decrypt it, right? Uh, so you have this second key or different key, which is this category. This makes it asymmetric, right? You have this private key to get it back to a text that you wanna read, okay? So I hope that's clear to you uh, in terms of the types of encryption, uh, decryption flow. So make sure you understand these two things. Okay. All right, and then I just uh, kind of highlighted here, you don't have to type all this in, you can just type Google uh, James Lynn uh, and you'll see a whole bunch of his video come up. You can look at this, this gives you some pretty cool tips um, to keep yourself safe. Um, and it's not that long of a video, so feel free to take a look at that. Uh, and hopefully uh, this gives you uh, a good view of what you're gonna be reading uh, in the book for uh, privacy. Okay, thank you.